Grace and peace, my brothers and sisters, grace and peace. My name is Brother Yehuda, and I would like to say grace and peace to my brothers and born-again Israelites and risen with Christ's ministry. My brother Karadazar and my brother beloved. Grace and peace, my brothers. And grace and peace to all my brothers and sisters that support and love the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, today's topic is the perverse judgment of the people. Christ reproaches Chorazin. Now, Chorazin was a village in northern Galilee, two and a half miles from Capernaum, on a hill above the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee. Now, we're going to be in the book of Matthews, chapter 11, verse 16 through 24. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in this in the markets a calling unto their fellow and saying we have piped piped unto you and ye have not danced we have mourned unto you and you have not lamented for john came neither eating nor drinking and they said he had a devil the son of man came eating and drinking and they say behold a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. Then began he to upbraid the cities where wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repent not. Woe unto thee, Corazin, woe unto ye, Bethsaida, Bethsaida. The name Bethsaida means house of the hunt. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repent long ago in sackcloth, which is sackcloth means rough fabrics and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than of for thee. Now, like before, Chorazin means the, the secret. It means the secret or the mystery. But as the city, Chorazin means was a village in northern Galilee, two and a half miles from Capernaum, on a hill above the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee. Now Christ was going on in the praise of John the Baptist and his mystery, but here, I'm sorry, in his ministry, but here Christ stops on the on the sudden and turns that to the reproach of those who enjoy both John and the ministry of Christ and his apostles as well in vain. So in other words, he turned to reproach the ones that didn't enjoy the, the ministry of John the Baptist and Christ and the apostles. As to that generation we may observe to whom he compares them. We're going to go in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 16 through 19. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the market and calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. Ye, we have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. So when you say pipe, that means they, they sang and, and you have not danced to their music. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a devil. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, behold, a man glut, glutinous and a wine beber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. So they, in other words, they always have something to say about something. Now that's in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 16 through 19. And as to the particular places Christ instanced in, 
we may observe with whom Christ compares them to. We're going to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 20 through 24. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repent not. So in other words, they seen the works and they, they viewed it and they still haven't repent. So that's why he said it'll be better for them at Salem and Gomorrah than it will be here. It'll be more tolerable for them in Salem and Gomorrah than it would here because they are seeing the works that Christ is doing and is your whole your held more responsible for not repenting than they did at Sodom and Gomorrah because they didn't have the vision of the works of Jesus Christ in the present. They had to listen and believe. Here you got in Capernaum they had Christ was there. Christ did plenty of plenty of miracles and they still didn't repent. Woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto ye, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable, tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have been, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. Christ is telling them like it is. That's in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 20, verse 24. But people don't pay that no mind. They hear the word and they just continue doing what they do. And they figure that they, I, I don't even, it's, it's so, it's so crazy nowadays, even in today's life, you know, you tell a person the word of God, you know, people continue in their, in their walk of their miserable and their profound and their, um, jealousy and their envious and their malice and their anger and their malicious they, they just walk in that lifestyle and they continue in that to be angry and hateful to one another to be to be covenant to be you know they this is you know it's just it's just a it's almost like a natural thing in this world like oh okay you you can do that you can be that no you can't be that not if you're trying to get salvation but they don't know they it's, it's hard. I mean, you know, we have to really stay on them and and, and be and, and, and pray for them because the fact that they really not know what they, they do. Like Christ said on the cross, please forgive them because they know not what they do because there's, there's a lot of that going on. And and it's sad. As to the that generation, the body of the Jewish people at that time. There were many indeed that pressed into the kingdom of heaven, but the gener generality continued in unbelief and stubbornness. John was a great and good man, but the generation in which his lot was cast was as barren and unprofitable as could be, and unworthy of John. The badness of the places where good ministers live severes for a foil to their beauty. It was Noah's praise that he was righteous in his generation, having commended John, Christ com command, con condemns those who had John among them and did not profit by John's ministry. The more praise worthy the people are if they slight him, and so it will be found in the day of account. This our Lord Jesus here sets forth in a parable yet speaks as if he were at a loss to find out a similar to proper to represent this whereunto shall i liken this generation there is not a greater absurdity than that which they are guilty of who have good preaching among them and are never the better for it it is hard to say what they are what they are like the similitude is taken from some common custom among the Jewish children at their, at their play, who, as is usually with children, 
intimated the fashion of grown people at their marriage and funeral rejoicing and lamenting. But being all a jest, it made no impression, no more did the ministry either of John the Baptist or of Christ upon that generation. Now he especially reflects on the scribes and Pharisees who had a proud conceit of themselves. Therefore, to humble them, Christ compares them to children and their behaviors to children's play. The parable will be best explained by opening it and the illustration of it together in these five observations. The God of heaven uses a variety of proper means and methods for the conversion and salvation of poor souls. God will have all men to be saved and therefore leaves no stone unturned in order to it. Now the great thing Christ aims at is the melting of our will, our wills into a compliance with the will of God. And in order to this, the affection of us with the discoveries he has made of himself, having various affection to be wrought upon, he uses various ways to be working upon them, which though, though differing one from another, all tend to the same thing. And God is in them all carrying on the same design in the parable in the parable this is called his piping to us and his mourning to us Christ had piped to us in the precious promise of the gospel proper to work upon hope and mourned to us in the dreadful threatening of the law proper to work upon fear that he might frighten us out of our sins and allure us to himself he had piped to us in gracious and merciful providence mourned to us in calamitous afflicting providence and has set the one over against the other he has taught his ministers to change their voice we're going to go on the book of galatians chapter 4 verse 20 I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. That's in the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 20. Now, sometimes to speak in thunder from Mount Sinai, sometimes in, in a still, small voice from Mount Zion, in the explanation of the parable is set forth the different tempers of John's ministry and of Christ, who were the two great lights of that generation on the other hand john came mourning to them neither eating nor drinking nor not conversing familiarly with people nor ordinary eating in company but alone in his cell in the wilderness where his meat was locust and wild honey now this one would think should work upon them for such and severe mortified life as this as this was very agreeable to the doctrine he preached and that minister is most likely to do good whose converse conversation is according to his doctrine and yet the preaching even of such a minister is not always effectual on the other hand the mm -hmm. son of man came eating and drinking and so he piped unto them christ conversed familiarly with all sorts of people not affecting any peculiar strictness or severe he was affable and easy of us access not shy of any company was often at feast both with pharisees and publicans to try if this would win upon those who were not wrought upon by John's res reserve re res 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 <laughs> reserveness. Those who were not awed by John's frown would be allured, but Christ smiles from whom Saint Paul learned to be become all things to all men. 
We're going to go on the book of first of the book of first Corinthians chapter nine, verse 22 to the weak became I as weak that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. That's in the book of first Corinthians chapter nine, verse 22. Meaning in matters that all indifference which may be done or not done with a good conscience, Paul said, I accommodated all customs and manners that by all means I might save some. Now, our Lord Jesus, by his freedom, did not at all condemn John any more than John did condemn him. Though their de deportment was so very different though we are never so clear in the goodness of our own practice yet we must not judge of others by it there may be a great diversity of operations where it is the same god that worketh all in all we're going to go on the book of first corinthians chapter 12 verse 6 and there were diversities of operation but it is the same god which work worketh all in all that's in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 6. So Paul calls the inward power which comes from the Holy Spirit and makes men fit for wonderful things. And this various manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with. We're going to go in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 7. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, what went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind. That's in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 7. The, the similarity and the difference between the ministry of the prophets, the preaching of John, and the full light of the gospel which Christ has brought, especially that God's ministers are variously gifted. The ability and genuous of some lie one way of others. Another way. Some are bonegers, bonegies, which is sons of thunder. Others are Barnabies, Beas, sons of consolations. Yet all these worketh that one and the self same spirit. We're going to go on the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 11. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man several, severally as he will. That's in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 11. Now he adds, moreover, somewhat else that is, that although these gifts are unequal, yet they are most wisely divided. Because the will of the Spirit of God is the rule of this, this, this distribution. And therefore we ought not to, to condemn either, but to praise both and praise God for both, who tries various ways of dealing with person of various tempers. That sinner may be either made pliable or left inexcusable so that whatever the issue is god will be glorified now the various methods which god takes for the conversion of sinners are with many fruitless and ineffectual ye have not danced ye have not lamented you have not been suitably affected either with the one or with the other particular means have as in medicine, their particular intentions which must be answered, particular impressions which must be submitted to in order to the success of the great and general design. Now, if people will be neither bond by law, nor invited by promise, nor frightened by threatening, will neither be awakened by the greatest things, nor allured by the sweetest things, nor startled by the most terrible things nor be made sensible by the plainest things if they will hearken to the voice neither of scriptures nor reason nor experience nor providence nor conscience nor interest what more can they bear the bellow 
are burned and lead is and lead is consumed the founder melteth in vain reprobate silver shall men call them we're gonna go on the book of jeremiah chapter 6 verse 29 the bellows is burned the lead is consumed by the fire the founder melted in vain for the wicked are not plucked away that's in the book of jeremiah chapter 6 verse 29 meaning all the pain and labor that has been taken with them is lost now the minister's labor is bestowed in vain we're gonna go on the book of isaiah chapter 49 verse 4 then i said i have labored in vain i have spent my strength for nothing in vain yet surely my judgment is with the lord and my work with my god that's in the book of isaiah chapter 49 verse 4 meaning christ and his members comp complains that his labor and preaching take no effect yet he contended that his doings are approved by god and which is a much greater loss the grace of god receives in vain we're going to go in the book of second corinthians chapter 6 verse 1 we then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of god in vain that's in the book of second corinthians chapter 6 verse 1 meaning men do not only need the ministry of the gospel before they have received grace in order that they may be partakers of the gospel but also after they have received grace they need to continue in the gospel it is some comfort to faithful ministers when they see little success of their labors that it is no new thing for best preachers and the best preaching in the world to come short of the desires and who has believed i report it from the blood of the slain from the fat of the mighty the bow of those great commanders christ and john return so often empty we're going to go in the book of second samuels chapter 1 verse 22 for the blood of the slain from the fat of the mighty the bow of the jonathan turned not back and the sword of Saul returned not empty. That's in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 22. Now, don't morrow if, you, if ours do so, and we prophesy to so little purpose unto dry bones. Now that, commonly, now, that commonly those persons who do not profit by the means of grace are perverse and if, reflects upon the ministers by whom they enjoy those means and because they do not get good themselves they do all the hurt they can to others by raising and propagating prejudice against the word and the faithful preachers of it those who will not comply with god and walk after christ confront god and walk contrary to god so this generation did because they were resolved not to believe christ and john and to own them as they ought to have as they ought to have done for the best of men they set themselves to abuse them and to re represent them as the worst as for john the baptist they say he has a devil they inputted his strictness and reservedness to melancholy and some kind of degree of a possession of satan why should we hear john they said john is a poor why should we hear john they say john is a poor and sick man full of fancies and under the power of crazy imagination as for jesus christ they inputted his free and ob obliging conversation to the more vicious habits of luxury and flesh pleasing behold a glutinous man and a wine bibber no reflection could be more foul and invidious it is the charge against the rebellious son we're going to go in the book of deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 20 and they shall say unto the elder of his city this our son is stubborn and rebellious he will not obey our voice he is 
a gluten and a drunkard. That's in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21, verse 20. He is a gluten and a drunkard, yet none could be more false and unjust for Christ. Please, not himself. We're going to go on the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 3. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on men. That's in the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 3. Meaning a confirmation taken from the example of Christ who suffered all things to bring not only the weak but also his most cruel enemies to overcome them with practice, with patience to his father. Nor did ever any man live such a life of self-denial, mortification and contempt of the world as Christ lived. Christ that was undefiled and separate from sinners is here represented as a league with them and polluted by them. The most unspotted innocency and the most unparalleled excellency will not always be fenced against the reproach of tongue. Nay, a man's best gift and best actions which are best well intended and will calculate well calculated or for edification may be made the matter of his reproach. The best of our actions may become the worst of our accusations. As David's fasting, we're going to go on the book of Psalm chapter 69 verse 10. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. That's in the book of Psalm chapter 69 verse 10. Meaning, David's zeal moved him to lament to pray and pray for his salvation. It was true in some sense that Christ was a friend to publicans and sinners, the best friend they had ever had. For Christ came into the world to save sinners, great sinners, even the chief, so Paul said very freely, who had been himself not a publican and a sinner, but a Pharisee and sinner but this is and will be to eternity Christ's praise. And they forfeited the benefit of it who turned it to his reproach that the course of this great unfruitfulness and perverse perverseness of people under the means of grace. It is that they are like children sitting in the market. They are foolish as children forward as children, mindless and playful as children, would they but show themselves men in understanding, there would be some hope for them. The marketplace they sit in is to some a place of idleness. We're going to go in the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 3. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. That's in the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 3. And to others, a place of worldly business. We're going to go in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 13. Go to, go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go in such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. That's in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 13. Now the other fault is this. That men do so confidently determine on these and those matters and businesses as though every moment of their life did not depend on God. Now to all a place of noise or diversion so that if you ask the reason why people get so little good by the means of grace, you will find it is because they are slothful and trifling and do not love to take pain or because their heads and hands and hearts are full of the world the cares of which choke the word and choke their souls at last we're going to go in the book of ezekiel chapter 33 verse 31 and they come to thee as the people come and they sit before thee as my people and they hear thy word but they will not do them for with their mouth they show much love but their hearts go with after their covetousness. That's in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, verse 31. 
Now this declares that we ought to hear God's word with such zeal and, and affection that we should at all points obey it, else we abuse the word to our own con condemnation and make of this its ministers as though they were gestures, gestures to, to serve men's foolish fantasies. They would have in their minds, as we read in here in the book of Amos, chapter 8, chapter 8 verse 5 saying when will the new moon be done be gone that we may sell corn and the sabbath that we may set forth wheat making the ephap meaning an ancient hebrew dry measure equivalent to a bushel small and shekel great and falsifying the balance by the seed so they will be you know these these new holy days that god put on the Israelites in the Old Testament, there was new moons, the Sabbath day. So on them days, they all Sabbath. So you can't cook, you can't sell, buy and sell on them days. So they're saying, when will it be over so we can go back and sell? So they're not even putting the the, the honor in the holy days. They're just using it like it's hindering them, like it's inconveniencing them. So let's hurry up and get this day out the way so this way we can go back to do our buying and selling. And there's no honor in the holy days. So that's why God had taken it away. As in the book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 5. Meaning, when the shortage had come, they were so greedy for gain that they thought the holy days to be a hindrance to them. That is the measure small and the price great. And they study to divert their own thoughts from everything that is serious. In the markets they are, and they are. There they sit, and these things their hearts rest, and by them they resolve to abide. Though the, the means of grace by slighting and abused by many, by the most, yet there is a remnant that, th that through grace to improve them and answer the designs of them to the glory of God and the good of their own souls. But wisdom is justified of her children. Christ is wisdom and in christ are hid treasures for the wisdom the saints are the children god has given christ we're going to go in the book of hebrews chapter 2 verse 13 and again i will put my trust in him and again behold i and the children which god has sent has given me that's in the book of hebrews chapter 2 verse 13 now he applies the same to the the kingly power of Christ in delivering his own from the power of the devil and death. I will commit myself to him and to his defense. This Isaiah speaks of himself and his disciples, but signifying by this all ministers as also his disciples signify the whole church. Therefore, seeing Christ is the head of of the prophets and ministers these words are more rightly confirmed by christ than by isaiah now the guys now the gospel is wisdom it is the wisdom from above true believers are begotten again by it and born from above to they are wise children wise for themselves and their true interest not like the foolish children that sat in the market these children of wisdom justify wisdom. They comply with the designs of Christ's grace, answer the intention of it, and are suitably affected with the impression by the various method it takes. As so evident, the wisdom of Christ is taking these methods. This is explained in the book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 29. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justify God being baptized with the baptism of John. That's in the book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 29. They said that he was just good, faithful, and merciful. The publicans justify God being baptized with the baptism of John and afterwards embracing the gospel of Christ. The success 
of the of the means of grace justifies the wisdom of God in the choice of these means against those who charge him with folly therein. The cure of every patient that observe the physician's order justifies the wisdom of the physician. And therefore, Paul is not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, because whatever it is to others, to them that believe, it is the power of God unto salvation. We're going to go in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 16. For I, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. That's in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 16. Now, this is the second part of the epistle, which is the letter, until the beginning of chapter 9. Now, the whole end and purpose of the discussion is this. That is to say, to show that there is but one way to attain unto salvation, which is displayed to us by God in the gospel. And that is equally to every nation. And this way is Jesus Christ apprehended by faith. Now, God's mighty and effectual instrument to save men by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, when this word Greek is contrasted with the word Jew, then it signifies the Gentiles. When the cross of Christ, which to others is foolishness and a stumbling block, is to them that are called the wisdom of God and the power of God. We're going to go on the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 23 and 24. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block, and unto the Greek, foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. That's in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 23 and 24. So that they make the, the knowledge of that the submit of their ambition. We're going to go in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and 2. For I determine not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 2. Meaning I did not profess any knowledge but the knowledge of Christ and him crucified. Now the efficiency of of that is to is the crown of our glory. We're going to go on the book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. But God for, forbid that I should glory said in the cross of the set in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. That's in the book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. Meaning, he does not dwell in comparing himself with them, showing that on the other hand, he rejoices in those afflictions which he suffers for Christ's namesake. And as Christ is despised by the world, so does he in the same way consider the world as wicked. And this is the true circumcision of a true Israelite. Now, when Paul uses this word in good sense, or way it signifies to rest a man's self holy in a thing and to content himself in it here is wisdom justified of her children wisdom's children are wisdom's witnesses in the world we're gonna go on the book of isaiah chapter 43 verse 10 ye are my witnesses said the lord and my servant whom i have cha chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me there was no God formed neither shall there be after me that's in the book of Isaiah chapter 43 verse 10 meaning the prophets and people to whom God hath given his laws meaning especially Christ and by Christ all the faithful and and shall be produced as witnesses in that day when wisdom that is now justified by the saints shall be glorified in the saints and admired to all them that believe. We're going to go on the book of Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired to all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. 
That's in the book of Second Thess Thessalonians, chapter one, verse ten, meaning they are considered as children of God by the faith which they have in the gospel, which is preached to them by the apostles. If the unbelief of some reproach Christ by giving him the lie, the faith of others shall honor Christ by setting it to the its zeal. To the zeal that Christ is true and that Christ also is wise. We're going to go on the book of First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 25. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than man and the weakness of God is stronger than men. That's in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 25. Whether we do it or not, it will be done. Not only God's equity, but his wisdom will be justified when God speaks, when God judges. Well, this is the account Christ gives of that generation. And that generation is not passed away, but remains in a su succession of the like. For as it was then, it has been since and is still some believe the things which are spoken, and some believe not. We're going to go on the book of Acts, chapter 28, verse 24. And some believe the things which are which were spoken, and some believe not. That's in the book of Acts, chapter 28, verse 24. Now the gospel is a taste of life to those that believe, and a taste of death to those that are disobedient. As to the particular places in which Christ was most converted, Conversant, what Christ said in general of that generation, Christ applied in particular to those places to affect them. Then began he to upbraid them. We're going to go in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 20. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repent not. That's in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 20. Meaning the proud reject. The gospel offered to them to their great hurt and pain which led to the salvation of the simple christ began to preach to them long before we're going to go on the book of matthew chapter 4 verse 17 for that time jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand that's in the book of matthew chapter 4 verse 17 Meaning the kingdom of heaven is come to you, but Christ did not begin to upbraid until now. Rough and unpleasing methods must not be taken until gent gentler means have first been used. Christ is not apt to upbraid. Christ give liberally and upbraideth not until sinners by their stubbornness extort it from Christ. Wisdom first invites, but when her invitation are slighted, then she abrades. When I say abrades, I mean scold. We're going to go on the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 20 and 24. Wisdom crieth without she uttereth her voice in the streets, because I have called and ye refuse. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. That's in the book of Proverbs. Chapter one, verse twenty and twenty-four. Those that those those do not go in Christ's method, who begin with upbraidings. Now we're going to observe the sin charged upon them, not any against the moral law, than any appeal who have lain to the gospel, which would have re relieved, but a sin against the gospel. The, remed the remedial law and that is in penitency this was it he upbraided them with or reproached them or as the most shameful of grateful ungrateful thing that could be that they repent not willful impenitency is the great damning sin of the multitudes that enjoy the that enjoy the gospel and which more than any other sinners will be abraded with to eternity. The great doctrine that both John and the Baptist and Christ and the apostles preached was repentance. The great thing designed both in the piping and in the morning was to prevail with people 
to change their minds and ways, to leave their sins and turn to God, and this day will not be brought to. He does not say because they believe not. For some kings of faith, many of them had that Christ was a teacher come from God, but because they repent not, their faith did not prevail to the transforming of their hearts and the reforming of their lives. Christ reproved them for their other sins that he might lead them to repentance. But when they repent not, he upbraided them with that as their refusal to be healed. He upbraided them with it that they might upbraid themselves and might at length see the folly of it as that which alone makes the sad case of desperate ones and the, the wound incurable. Now the aggravation of the sin, they were the, they were the cities in which most of his mighty works were done, for there about his principal residence had been for some time. Some places enjoy the means of grace in greater plenty power and purity than other places god is a free agent and acts so in all his disposals both as the god of nature and as the god of grace common and distinguishing grace by christ's mighty works they should have been prevailed with not only to receive his doctrine but to obey his law the curing of bodily diseases should have been the healing of their souls but it had not that effect. The stronger in inducement we have to repent, the more heinous is the impentency, and the severer will the reckoning be, for Christ keeps account of the mighty works done among us and of the gracious works done for us as well, by which also we should be led to repentance. We're going to go on the book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 4. Or, or despiseth thou the rich of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. That's in the book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 4. Meaning the passionate and grievous crying out against those that please themselves because they see more than others do and yet are in no way better than other, others are. Chorazin and Bethsaida are here instant. Chorazin name alone and Bethsaida and Capernaum as one of the cities in which our Lord's mighty works were done and which were was doomed to be to woe because of signal privilege neglected. We're going to go on the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 21 and 22. Woe unto thee. Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyrant and Sidon, they would have repent long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. That's in the book of Matthews. Chapter 11, verse 21 and 22. They have each of them their woes. Woe unto the Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida. Christ came into the world to bless us, but if that blessing be slighted, he was woe in reverse, and his woes are of all others the most terrible. These two cities were suitable upon the Sea of Galilee. The former on the east side and the latter on the west. Rich and populous places, Bethsaida was lately advanced to the city by Philip, the subordinate prince. Now out of it, Christ took at least three of his apostles. Highly were those these places favored. Yet because they knew not the day of their visitation, they fell under these woes, which struck so close to them that soon after this, they decayed and dwindled into means. Obscure village, so fatally does sin ruin cities, and so certainly does the word of Christ take place. Now, Chorazin and Bethsaida 
are here compared with Tyrant and Sidon, two maritime cities. We read much of it in the Old Testament that had been brought to ruin but began to flourish again. These cities bordered upon Galilee but were in a very ill name among the Jews for idolatry and the other wickedness Christ sometimes went into the coast of Tyrant and Sidon. We're going to go on the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. That's in the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 21. Now the coasts which were next to Tyre and Sidon, that is in the region where Palestine faces towards Venice and the Sea of Syria, they were never there. The Jews would have taken it very heinously if he had therefore Christ to convince and humble them. Here shows that Tyrant and Sidon would not have been so bad as Chorazin and Bethsaida if they had been if they had had the same word preached and the same miracles wrought among them, they would have repented and that long ago as Nevina did in sackcloths and ashes. Christ, who knows the hearts of all, knows that if he had done, gone and lived among them and preached among them, he should have done more good there than where he was yet. He continued where he was for some time to encourage his ministers to do so, though they see not the success they desire among the children of disobedience. Some are more easily wroth upon them than, than others, and it is a great aggravation of the imp impenitency of those who plentifully enjoy the means of grace. Not only that there are many who sit under the same means that are wroth upon, but that there are many more that would have been wroth upon if they had enjoyed the same means. We're going to go on the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 6 and 7. Not to many people of a strange speech and of any hard language whose words thou canst not, can't not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard, hard hearted. That's in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 6 and 7. Our repentance is slow and de delayed, but theirs would have been speedy. They would have repented long ago. Ours has been slight and super superficial. Theirs would have been deep and serious and soft clothes and ashes. Yet we must observe with an awful adoration of the divine sovereignty that the Tyrant, tyrannous and uh, Sidonians will justify perish in their sins. Though if they had had the means of grace, they would have repent. For God is a debtor to no man. That therefore Tyrant and Sidon shall not be so miserable as Chorazin and Bethsaida, but it shall be more tolerable for them in the day of judgment. We're going to go on the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 22. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyrant and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. That's in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 22. Now, first, at the, at the day of judgment, the everlasting state of the children of men will by an unerring and unalterable doom be determined happiness or misery and the several degrees of each. Therefore, it is called the eternal judgment. We're going to go on the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 2. Of the doctrine of baptism and of the laying of the hands on the hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. That's in the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 2. Now because, now because deceives of the eternal state and the judgment of of all that means of grace that were enjoyed in that in the state of probation will certainly come into the count 
and it will be inquired not only how bad we were, but how much better we might have been had it not been our own faults. We're going to go on the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. And now, O inhabitants of Israel and men of Judah, judge, I pray, you between me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I look that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. That's in the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. Thirdly, though the damnation of all that perish will be intolerable, yet the damnation of those who had the fullest and clearest discoveries made them of the power and grace of Christ, and yet repent not, will be of all other the most tolerable. The gospel light and sound open in faculties and enlarge the capacities of all that see and hear it, either to receive the riches of divine grace, or if that grace be slightened, to take in the more plentiful effusions of divine wrath. If shall reproof, reproof be the, the, the torture of hell, it must need be hell indeed to those who had such a fair opportunity of getting to heaven. Son, remember that. Capernaum is here, condemned within. Emphasis. Emphasis. We're going to go on the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 23. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. That's in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 23. And thou, Capernaum, hold up thy hand and hear thy doom. Capernaum, above all the cities of Israel, was dignified with Christ's most usual residence. It was like Sh Shilah, Sh Sh Shiloh of old the place which he chose to put his name his name there and then feared with it as with shiloh we're gonna go to the book of jeremiah chapter 7 verse 12 and 14 but go ye not unto my place which was in shiloh where i set my name at the first and see what i did to it for the wickedness of my people israel therefore what I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. That's in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 12 and 14. Now Christ's miracles here was daily bread, and therefore as the manna of old were despised and called light bread, many a sweet and comfortable lecture of grace christ had read them to little purpose and therefore he reads them a dreadful lecture of wrath those who will not hear the former shall be made to feel the latter we have here capernaum's doom put absolutely thou which art exalted to heaven shall be brought down to hell those who enjoy the gospel and power and purity and thereby exalt to heaven they have therein a great honor for the present and a great advantage of eternity they are lifted up towards heaven but if notwithstanding they still cleave to the earth they may thank themselves that they are not lifted up into heaven secondly gospel advantages and advancement abuse will sink sinners so much lower into hell our eternal privilege will be so far from saving us that if our hearts and lives be not agreeable to them they will but inflame their reckoning the higher the the pre pre precipice is the more fatal is the fall from them from it let us not therefore be high-minded but fear not slothful but diligent we're gonna go to the book of job chapter 20 verse 6 and 7 though his excellency mount up 
to the up the heavens, and his head reach unto the clouds. Yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? That's in the book of Job, chapter 20, verse 6 and 7. We have it here put in comparison with the doom of Sodom, a place more remarkable both for sin and ruin than perhaps any other. And yet Christ here tells us that Capernaum means would have saved Sodom if these miracles had been done among the Sodomites. As bad as they were, they would have repented and their sins would have remained until this day. And a monument of sparring mercies as now it is of destroying justice. We're going to go on the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth, for example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. That's in the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 7. Meaning, following the steps of Sodom and Gomorrah, now Christ sets forth their horrible and wicked perversion upon true repentance through Christ. Enough, even the greatest sin shall be pardoned and the greatest ruin prevented, that of Sodom not expected. Angels were sent to Sodom, and yet it remained not. But if Christ had been sent there, it would have remained. How well is it? for us then that the world to come is put in subjection to Christ and not to angels we're going to go in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 5 for until the angels had he put he had not put in subjection the world to come wherefore whereof we speak and that's in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 5 meaning if it was in brutal matter to condemn the angels who are but servants it is much more brutal to condemn that most mighty king of the restored world now the world to come of which Christ is father in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace that's in the book of isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 or the church which as a new world was to be gathered together by the gospel lot would not have seen as one that mocked if he had wrought miracles that sodom's ruin will therefore be less at the great day that Capernaum's sodom would have many things to answer for but not the sin of neglecting Christ as Capernaum will. If the gospel prove a savor of death, a killing savor, it is doubly so it is of death unto death, so great a death. We're going to go on the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? That's in the book of Second Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 16. Again, Christ dismisses all suspicion of a range, attributing all things that Christ did to the power of God, who Christ serves sincerely. And with honest affection, and Christ makes them witnesses of this, even to the sixth verse of the next chapter. We're going to go to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 16. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as the sincerity, but as of God, and the signs in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. We're going to go to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 6 who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. That's in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Christ has said the same of all other places that receive not his ministers, nor bid his gospel welcome. We're going to go on the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 15. 
Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. That's in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 15. It shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom than for that city. We that have now the written word of in our heart, in our hands, the gospel preached and the gospel ordinances administer to us and live under the dispensation of the spirit have advantage, not did not interfere to those of Chorazin and Bethsaida and Capernaum. And the account in the great day will be accordingly. It has therefore been justly said that the professions of this age, whether they go to heaven or hell, will be greatest debtors in either of those places. If to heaven, the greatest debtors to divine mercy or those rich means that brought them, brought them there. If to hell, the greatest debtors to divine justice for those rich means that would have kept them from them. Now for our now for our prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you, I come to your throne of glory and grace with peace and humility. Help us to think and dwell in the glory of Christ Jesus. Father, help us to see it in your word, the gospel of Jesus Christ, so we can receive your word through Christ with faith. Change us to glory to glory by your Holy Spirit in the way of the apostles in your gospel in christ jesus name may god be the glory as i walk live and pray in your image and likeness the fruit of the spirit i come in love and leave in peace grace and peace and much love and blessings to you and your family have a blessed day to all the saints my brothers and sisters in christ jesus amen amen